Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias Antiochian Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Monday, July 10th, 2023, and here are the readings for today. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 16, verses 17 through 24. Brethren, I appeal to you to take note of those who create dissensions and difficulties in opposition to the doctrine which you have been taught. Avoid them. For such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites, and by fair and flattering words, they deceive the hearts of the simple-minded. For while your obedience is known to all, so that I rejoice over you, I would have you wise as to what is good, and guileless as to what is evil. Then the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Timothy, my fellow worker, greets you. So do Lucius and Jason and Sosipater, my kinsmen. I, Tertius, the writer of this letter, greet you in the Lord. Gaius, who is host to me and to the whole church, greets you. Erastos, the city treasurer, and our brother Cortus greet you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 13, verses 10 through 23, and verse 43. Let us be attentive. At that time, the disciples of Jesus came to him and said to him, Why do you speak to the crowds in parables? And he answered them, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to him who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. With them indeed is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, You shall indeed hear, but never understand, and you shall indeed see, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are heavy of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should perceive with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn for me to heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Truly I say to you, many prophets and righteous men longed to see what you see, and did not see it and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is he who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the delight in riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is he who hears the word and understands it, he indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, in another thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Glory to thee, our God, glory to thee. In today's gospel, our Lord reveals to his disciples a methodology that he uses and why he chooses to use it. What I am speaking of is the use of parables. Parables are a particular literary technique that is used to say something, but perhaps not in a direct and in-your-face kind of way. By telling it in a way that causes the hearer to have to apply some of their own experience, some of their own knowledge, some of their own logic, it, it puts them in a position, the hearer, that they could totally get it wrong. But they also, upon hearing it and understanding it, would hear it in such a profound and jarring way 
that it causes them to never forget the meaning or the lesson that the parable is trying to convey. So our Lord today is speaking of his parable of the seed that falls on four different types of ground. I'm not going to talk about them in specific. I'm just going to point out that the literary technique here is that them in that day, would they would be very used to agrarian existence. They would know what seeds would do, be like in different terrains. They would know when it hits against the hard path. They would know when it gets to be heard along rocky soil or amongst thorny weeds or finally amongst good, rich, and healthy soil. They would understand all of that. And so our Lord this time in his parable would be conveying something that they had a degree of familiarity with. What they wouldn't understand is the nature of how hearing the word of God is comparable to planting seeds. And so they would apply what they know in the agrarian world, in the agriculture world, to what our Lord is saying with regard to what's going on in the hearing of the gospel. And as a result, they would remember much more deeply and thus, you know, barring our Lord just coming out and directly saying it. Okay, so there are plenty of parables. There's the parable of the Good Samaritan. There's the parable of the lost sheep. There's the parable of the wise and foolish virgins. There's a parable involving banquets and uh, wine presses and all sorts of different kinds. There's the parable of the publican and the Pharisee. There's the, um, so there's all those different kinds of parables and each one of them again serves this point of driving home uh, an object lesson sometimes um, to, to get the people to understand and to do something about it um, based on um, some level of familiarity or maybe a turn of a phrase or something like that. One of the greatest examples of course is the Good Samaritan where a Samaritan who's supposed to be despised and hated turns out to be the greatest person in the story, caring um, beyond all measure. He's caring, financial burden, going out of his way, doing all those things, healing him, or at least doing what he could to heal him. So this kind of thing would cause the hearer to be stunned. And if they hated Samaritans to the point where they were unwilling to listen, then our Lord would say, hearing they do not hear, hear, seeing they do not see. So this is a lesson for us in the hearing these parables ourselves. Are we desensitized to their meaning? Do we even know their meaning? If we aren't sure about the meaning, find a, a biblical guide, a study guide or um, take a look at the footnotes of the Bible and see if they have anything to offer to shed light on what's happening in this parable. Okay, Parable literally means to throw in a different direction. And so a lot of these stories are meant to lull people into a sense of security and then zap them with the, profund, with the profundity of a message that has a spiritual insight that causes them to change the way they are, to move from where they are to where they need to be. So all these things are part of the parable. Now, also in the gospel today, our Lord makes it pretty clear that some people just aren't going to get these parables. They will not see or understand. They will not hear and learn. Instead, they will just go on with their lives. That happens today too. You can't always expect to show the mercy of Christ on someone else and get an immediate response where they decide to drop everything and be a follower like you are. So it's, it, we have to have a degree of patience, a degree of prayer, of mercy, of forgiveness, of kindness, of compassion. When we have that, then when the people hear but do not understand, when they see or they don't see and they refuse to understand, when those things happen, we share more mercy than judgment. We share more compassion than a wish for them to fall into the abyss. So we exercise the very things that Christ tells us to exercise. Many of us who hear these kinds of parables and understand them and can apply them, we're blessed. We're very fortunate that we can do those things. Not everyone is given the same blessing and may God have mercy on them. All right, well, thank you very much. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a like. 
and, and subscribing to this channel and sharing the video with your friends. And if you have any questions, I'd love to interact with you. So please feel free to leave a question in the comments section below and I'll be happy to answer it as soon as I can. In the meantime, I pray that God will bless you and those that you love today and always. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Thank you very much for joining me today. I pray you have a great day and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.